So now I want to talk about cyclic groups. We all know cyclic groups. They are uh, amongst the simplest groups that we can think of. They are generated by only one element and uh, essentially just knowing the number of elements in the group, the order of the group, whether finite or infinite, is enough to determine completely the, the, the structure of the group, the multiplication table. So, suppose you have some group and you don't know whether it's cyclic or not. Here's a simple criterion that we're going to prove. The group is cyclic if and only if it admits a surjective group morphism from the group of integers. So before going uh, in detail in the proof of this fact, let me fix some notation and recall uh, the basic definition. So a cyclic group is a group G such that there exists an element G in G with a property that the group G can be written as the group generated by this element G. And with this notation, I mean in uh, when we use multiplicative notation, so the operation in G is the product, then this means the powers G power n, where n is an integer, so for all the integers. So this is of course equal to G, or the negative powers of G, the inverse of course, the identity element, that is the zeroth power of G, and the positive powers. And so on. Of course, in additive notation, this we would write it as as follows: minus two g, minus g. Well, in additive notation, usually the identity element is denoted as zero. And so on. So this was just a notational uh, comment. So now let's come to the problem that I want to discuss today. A group G is cyclic if and only if there exists a surjective morphism of groups. So let's proceed and prove now the only if part of the statement. So here we are supposing that G is cyclic and therefore it can be written as the group generated by some element G. I will define explicitly our morphism from the, ring, the group of integers to G. Define the map phi from Z to G that associates the number n, that associates to the number n, the power g to the n. So, as you can see, this map is uh, uh, for sure surjective. Right? By hypothesis, g is cyclic, and so it, it is precisely equal to the set of powers of the element G. And therefore, uh, whichever element we pick in G, it has to be expressed as the power of G. And the map is surjective. Now, let's see why it is a homomorphism 
or a morphism of groups. For this, we have to show that it preserves it preserves the group structure of Z into G. That is, it maps a combination, say of two numbers M and N, two integers, into the product of the two uh, of phi of M and phi of phi of N. So let's apply just our definition for phi for this map, and this is the element G power m plus n. Now this I can also write it as g to the m times g power n. And this by definition is equal to phi of m times phi of n. Where this times, this dot here, is precisely the product in g. So this concludes our this part of the proof that if the group is, cy is cyclic, then there exists such a surjective homomorphism. Let's move on and prove the other part. So in other words, we have to prove that uh, we have, we are given, say, f, I will call it f, is such a morphism. Now I will I claim that our group G is generated by the element even by f of 1. Okay, so let me give a name to this element for simplicity. I will just call it G. So first um, we immediately observe that, uh, uh, well, this, uh, the group generated by G is obviously contained inside the capital G, inside the group, since by definition the element G is in the group, so the group generated by G has to stay, has to be in G. So we have to prove the other direction, namely that G is contained inside the group generated by small g. So um, suppose I have an element, I pick an element A in the group. Now for some, so there exists n for some integer, uh, sorry, integer, um, a would be f of n. So here I'm using that our morphism f is uh, surjective by assumption. On the other hand, f of n, since it's a group of morphism, and this is f of 1 plus 1, a number n of times. This is also equal to f of 1 power n, or if you want, the product of f of 1 with itself n times. And this is just by our, uh, how we call it f of 1, this is g to the n. And so this clearly pr proves that A is inside the group generated by G. And therefore, our um, what we wanted to prove, namely, that the group G is contained in the group generated by the little element G. 
And this concludes our proof.